So we're starting a new unit today, and it's on animal defenses. And we're going to be kind of researching this for the next couple of weeks. So today we're just getting started and introducing the topic. So today we'll discover our topic by engaging in a virtual poster walk. Usually we'd be in the classroom, so you'd be able to go around and look at different posters, but we've included them on slides for you guys to kind of go on a virtual poster walk. And we'll review our learning targets and our new module um, guiding questions, and then we'll prepare for research. So go ahead and take a look at those learning targets. You can pause the video and read those. Okay, so hopefully you paused. The first learning target is I can infer about animal defense mechanisms based on information and pictures and text. That's what we're about to do. And I can support my inferences with details and examples from pictures and text. So what I'm going to do is kind of break down some of those words. There's this word animal defense mechanisms, which is new. And there's also infer. And so those are really important words to kind of hone in on and make sure that you know what they mean so that you can successfully do this lesson and this unit. So infer is to use what you already know about a topic and with information from the text to try and figure out something the author does not explicitly tell us. And so an example of that would be if someone in a story is crying, you might infer, so you might use the evidence you see to make a guess or a conclusion about something. Um, you might infer that he or she is sad. Another example is if a character in a story wears a hat, scarf, and mittens, you might infer, so you might guess, that the story takes place in the winter. Okay, and so this is kind of a breakdown of those um, that word, defense mechanisms. Defense means to protect yourself. So if you think of a sporting game, football, your offense is the one who's trying to score and your defense is the one who's trying to protect um, the team from being scored on. And so an animal um, in this sense to protect themselves uses certain things that they were created, um, certain ways that they look or certain ways that um, they're able to let out poison or whatever it is um, that allows them to protect themselves from harm. Because some animals are really small. If you think about a little insect, how does an insect protect itself? Um, how does it defend itself? So mechanism is a natural response to something else. So an animal's defense mechanism describes how they react to protect themselves from harm. So looking back at our learning targets again, I can infer, so I can make a guess based off evidence, about animal defense mechanisms. So defense mechanisms are what an animal uses to protect themselves based on information in pictures and texts. I can support my inferences, so my guesses based off of the pictures and texts that I read, with details and examples from pictures and texts. Okay, so we're about to go on our poster walk. And before we do that, I just wanted you guys to take a look at the chart you're going to be filling out today. And um, go ahead and actually on Google Classroom, pull up your student slides. This is the chart you'll be filling out. Um, so like I said, this is a, a whole unit. So we're just starting it today. We're not going to be filling out these last two columns. Okay, today we're just kind of dipping our toes in the water. And we're looking at the, the K here, that first column. Um, I think I know, and so the question that we're asking is how do animal bodies and behaviors help them survive? So I think I know. So there we'll be writing down things that we have as prior knowledge. So what do we already know about animals and how they protect themselves? And then in this column, the W, I want to know. So you're going to be coming up with at least three questions that maybe just kind of this lesson kind of pricks your mind and makes you intrigued about or want curious and you want to know more about it. So that's what you'll be putting there. Okay, so here's our first
first slide. As you guys look at this, I want you to think about what you can infer. So what can you guess um, based off of these pictures? What can you draw conclusions about? Maybe it's not directly stated, but it's something that you can kind of read between the lines on and, and make an inference about. So what can you infer about animal defense mechanisms from these pictures and or texts? So go ahead and take some, take some time to read through those. So as you're doing that, I just want to point out a couple of things. On this one, it's talking about um, a spider and how it defends itself. Think of a teeny tiny spider. How does a teeny tiny spider defend itself? So you'll be reading about this specific spider here. And then um, butterflies. Butterflies seem so harmless and fragile, but actually um, it says pretty poison. So take a look at that. What what kind of um, poison does a butterfly have? So there's the tiger moth and the rattle moth, the rattle box moth. And I like this one too down here with the octopus. So this is called a blue ringed octopus. And I think you guys will find it really interesting that um, here are my boxes. Oh! <laughs> My box is over it. Um, but if you look down here, this blue ringed octopus is um, the size of a golf ball. So it's tiny, but it's actually one of the only octopuses that if it bites you, um, you won't really feel any pain, but it actually will paralyze you. It says um, in this paragraph here, the bite is painless, but the octopus delivers saliva that contains highly dangerous um poison. So within minutes, the victim is paralyzed and soon he or she can no longer breathe. So that's a pretty dangerous creature there. Think about how, infer how that might um, help that, that animal protect itself. Okay, so take some time and read that and then you can um, play the video again. Okay, so hopefully you paused and got to read through those things. We're going to go on to our next slide. Okay, so here's our chart. Um, I just want to remind you guys as we go through this that you should be pausing the video and jumping back and forth and starting to fill in your chart. So I want you guys to go and take some time and fill in this first column. The things I know or things I maybe think I know about animal defenses. And you can fill in some of those things based off of what we just learned. So you might want to go back to that last slide and, and read about the octopus or read about the butterflies or the spider. Okay, so hopefully you guys took some time to, to write in some. I actually um, wrote up two examples for you all just to help with this process. So some things I think I know, some prior knowledge I'm coming in with, is that some animals, like spiders and snakes, use their poison venom to kill prey. So that's something that I think I know. And then my other thing that I think I know is that butterflies have patterns on their wings to help them blend in. Okay, so here's our second page. And these have a lot of different animals on them. So this one up here, this one up here is called walking sticks and they're insects that look like twigs. They're able to blend in with trees and avoid predators. So you might not even hardly be able to see that animal in there because it looks so much like a stick. And so this one down here is a possum. Possums play dead. Um, they pretend uh, playing possum, which means just to, to act dead and it sometimes can ward off their predators. People are animals that are trying to kill and eat that animal. So the colorful tiny poison dart frog can excrete poison from its skin when threatened. So you see that one? And then the harmless hoverfly benefits from looking just like a sting ready bumblebee. So that's that picture up there. So it looks like a bumblebee that would sting you, but actually the harmless hoverfly cannot sting you. And so this is a cinnabar caterpillar and it is orange and black. Um, and it, its warning colors are meant to keep predators away. So those bright colors kind of scare predators away sometimes. Okay, so here's our first slide. As you guys look at this, I want you to think about what I found this video I think you guys might like. This is the walking stick bug that you were just looking at. Can you see them? They're 
There's one. And another. And here's one, too. All heading out for a late night bite to eat. But they are not the only ones with an appetite. Walking stick looks delicate, feeble even. But survival is about much more than strength. After all, this species has traveled far from its original home in India. Their first line of defense is their incredible camel. Okay, so think about that. What can you infer? Stop and infer something. What about that animal, the way it is created? helps it protect itself. How does that animal stay safe? So I want you guys to think for a little bit and you can fill out your chart if you want to now. I'm gonna show you one more. So here's a video of a possum because they really do play dead. In case you ever wondered what a uh, possum playing dead looks like, they'll just kind of open their mouth and lay there. But as you can see, <laughs> he's still alive. He's just, uh pretending to be uh, dead, playing possum, as they call it. But yeah, they won't really bite or anything. Pretty good actor there. So infer, again, stop and infer. What, what about that animal's behavior helps it to stay safe? In case you ever want... So I want you guys to take a second with your charts. Now you're kind of, you can move on into this column here, the, the, the W column. I want to know, because you're going to need to list at least three questions. So come up with a question. Go ahead and pause the video now. Go to your chart. Fill out at least one question. Okay, so hopefully you guys paused that and um, filled in something in your chart. So I gave an example just to help you guys out. Um, I, I want to know, how does the, uh, the possum defend itself by playing dead? Um, couldn't they still be attacked? So that's a question I have, and I hope as we continue to research this topic that I'll be able to figure that, to find out that information. Um, and so this column here is really important because this is something that researchers really do. They have to ask questions about things if they're ever going to figure it out. Everything we know basically stems from a question. Okay, so this picture is, um, let me move my little box. Okay, so their name, which means little armed one in Spanish, refers to the bony armor. So question, what can you infer about animal defense mechanisms from this picture or text? This is an armadillo. What, what about that shell would help that animal keep sick? Stay safe. What can you infer? Okay. And here it says it bounces into the air with arched back and still legs. This motion is called starting or pronking. So you see this gazelle is leaping. What about that behavior would help that animal to survive or to stay safe? If a predator was coming at it, um, to make it its dinner, how would that behavior allow it to survive? Okay, so take a second, pause this, go back to your charts, and fill out another question you might have or something you want to know. Okay, so here's our other poster. Um, this is a butterfly. It says it feeds on poisonous milkweed plants as a caterpillar. It is unharmed by the poison and stores it up in its body to make itself poisonous to predators. So that butterfly is actually poisonous. That's insane. What can you infer? What can you guess based on this picture that that animal uses to help it stay safe? So let's take a look at this text here. It says, much of an animal's self-defense behavior comes from within it. Most animals are born knowing how to defend themselves. Scientists call this inborn knowledge instinct. So think about, think about that text. You can pause this and reread it. 
What about this instinctual knowledge, this knowledge that they're born with might help them to stay safe? Okay, so hopefully now you've filled in at least three questions here. You might have more questions that you're curious about. And this is something that we're going to continue in our unit to work on this chart. Eventually, we're going to get to these two sides of our chart, the evidence and um, your source. So you're going to, like a real researcher, you're actually going to decide your evidence and, and say, this is where I figured out the answer to this question based on the research that I've done. So I'm excited for that. Um, but for today, it's just these first two columns. Okay, this is another um, piece of text. Camouflage, also known as cryptic coloration, is the one-size-fits-all defense in the world of animals. Animals depend on their cryptic colorations to help them blend in. So again, take a second and infer. How would camouflage help an animal to stay safe? What can you guess based off of this text? Okay, and so just as a closing to this, um, just thinking about what we noticed, what we wondered during our poster walk, make sure you finish that chart. Those um, two sections, first two sections there, you need at least three questions. Um, and several things that you came in already knowing. So you should have several things in this first column and at least three in that second column there. And then you're going to make sure that you submit it onto Google Classroom.